Hello everyone, Bazaar Monkey here, and today I'll be talking to you about my most played Steam game, although I think game may not be the best way to define it. The game development engine may suit it more thoroughly. As you can see, this game development engine, RPG Maker MV, has almost 3,000 hours poured into it, and there'd be more before I got around to registering my Steam edition. However, this video is not a review in its truest sense, possibly more of a defilibration than a call for change from the developers and marketing team behind the engine. If you're looking for a general overview of RPG Maker MV, this isn't the video you're after. I'm annoyed by some of the attitude carried by the Degas staff and RPG Maker development crew, as well as its marketing team in general. Most of these issues can be summed up by two lines of thought that I'll list right now. 1. Why fix a bug if a plugin would do it anyway? 2. This bug doesn't break the engine, so let's add more features. These lines aren't stated anywhere, but you need only know a bit of the patch history or the RPG Maker Web Twitter page to see this attitude in spades. But in case you don't believe me, I've got a plethora of examples to provide. Patch 1.4 this patch was to fix the mobile exporting for the engine. I will admit it as a brave venture to jump from solely PC to not only both PC and Macintosh, but to something as finicky as mobile as well. And it's fairly obvious this was something they didn't handle well. For patches 1.0 to 1.3, mobile support barely worked at all. And 1.4 it does, but this came at a huge frame reduction lag spite slash chunking issues in the PC and Mac exporters, and even in the base game engine when playtesting. Instead of immediately scrambling to fix the unplayable frame rate issue, they let Yanfly, a prominent coder, fix it with a patch, and never fix it retroactively, referring to why fix a bug if the community slash a plugin will do it anyway. That's not even the best example. The real chaos begins in 1.6, when they broke debugging features entirely. To this day, this is an unfixable issue, and most players still use 1.5.1, despite the fact 1.6.2 has been implemented. Another stunning idiocy is that 1.6.1 also broke the Play Movie feature, which was working fine in 1.5. The features of 1.6 do not justify the shortcomings, and the fact they are now asking for more feature ideas, albeit in their usual roundabout manner, is pretty clearly showing the second line of thought. This bug doesn't break the game engine, so let's add more features. It probably doesn't need to be said, but there's a severely worrisome behavior pattern that ties into these lines of thought. Not only does it allow the developers to be lazy in a manner that is both preposterous and unforgivable, but it means that until a plugin developer makes a patch, these issues that can be anywhere from mild to highly inconvenient are in the game until someone in the community does all their work for them. It makes the engine feel a lot more like an amateur project, and like you've just paid $90, yes, 90 United States dollars, for a beta of a game development engine. They advertise new features, but I want to hear about fixes. In fact, since the level of issues in 1.6, I've since reverted my engine to 1.5.1, and will be staying on that from here on out, as it's the most stable build, that is, so long as you implement your flies patch. So it, unlike the 1.4 patches, doesn't lack to fucking sin. This lack and lackluster development ideology isn't the only thing I take issue with. Some out-of-the-box features of RPG Maker MV were mouse support, varying resolution, and a full-blown character generator. For the most part, the character generator is the least troublesome and most fulfilled of these features, and it being added on to isn't typically obtrusive enough to harm the engine proper. Sure, the output method may be a little sloppy, but it's nothing little gimp editing can't solve. The three-quarter sprites used for the battlers can also have uses in cutscenes and even isometric games to some extent. The resolution, however, was the most welcome change, and for the most part it works well. Its lack of dynamic adjustment is a little upsetting, but given the amount of work it may be to adjust everything accordingly, perhaps that was a wise move for the beginning. That's the sort of thing a plugin could be useful for. However, the one that suffers the most as a feature is the mouse system, and my recent thread on Twitter about it was the reason to make this video in the first place. The mouse system was very partial in its inclusion, and had some features that were seemingly designed with the express purpose of making developers' lives as difficult as possible. 
Perhaps assuming a way to check if a mouse click was enacted or a wheel scroll up or down was done via a conditional branch was asking too much. But expecting basic scroll functionality in item menus and skill menus to place such a feature would be spectacularly helpful is entirely amiss, despite the fact the scrolling does work on the save screen. This is an appallingly lazy implementation of the system. Asking for a conditional branch or two for mouse isn't much hassle, but having scrolling not working and the alternative being to use the arrow keys to scroll down the list makes you wonder why they implemented this barefaced, hacked up excuse for a mouse system to make it in the official release. I tested the mouse issue in a generic RPG I made called Terra New Moon to see how would it work. And that's out of some weird issues with better selection it works well until you want to scroll down the items menu. If I am making a game to be entirely mouse-based and a player plays a game knowing they can use the mouse for all of it, it's a sigh of relief. You can literally have a whole hand free to just rest while one clicks a few buttons. This experience is then blindsided and ruined, however, by having to press down or up in item menus once they reach their on-page limit. I have trouble believing I noticed these issues immediately, but yet people were paid money to oversee these systems and let such horrendously poor design decisions go through without any sort of word. It's especially painful since we know the menus already have the scrolling code, but only the save menu uses it. To my knowledge, this issue still plagues the engine even in its most recent build, probably because they figure people will use a mouse plugin to circumvent the issue, again, relaying to their lackluster why fix a bug if the community will do it for them approach. Another highly obnoxious addition to the mouse system is that when mouse walking, your character automatically sprints. At the forefront, this may seem like a no-brain solution to the typical pressing shift on the keyboard to get around faster. However, there's no option for devs or plays to toggle it off, and again, to this day, there still isn't. When the mouse implementation was announced, I was full of ideas. However, none of these dreams came true, and due to the horrendous auto-dashing which broke a lot of game sequences, I opted to do what the devs of RPG Maker should have done, and disable the mouse entirely until the systems were ready. Though given that the mouse feature was added in 1.0 and has changed nothing, even all the way through until the present build of 1.6.2, I think it's safe to guess that they never will be. This adds further to the engine feeling like a beta, with certain features being added, removed, and broken at a given patch. The most appalling of these being that 1.6 broke debug features entirely. This was the straw that broke the camel's back and saw me revert my engine and games to 1.5.1 with Yen's patch. I don't know how the developers of RPG Maker Web can so continuously knock these issues aside for complete non-issues like a single dancer sprite missing. Things that could easily be fixed by reverting to an older version, grabbing the sprite, and then copying it over to the new version. Instead, they've broken large chunks of the engine for some small and, I may note, ineffectual bug fixes. The truth is, I'll continue to use RPG Maker, and I'll continue to buy the DLC I can make use of, but there's a troubling amount of apathy and lack of communication in regards to its developers and the attitudes of the PR. This can clearly be witnessed from the RPG Maker web Twitter account. While this account might be more direct in marketing, given away by the fact that 60% of its tweets are used to sell me products, it also asks questions. One of my ironic favorites being, what feature would you like to see implemented? The Maker doesn't need more features, it needs fixes. I'm appalled that they still, after six broken buggy builds, haven't put that together. The moment someone calls out this out-of-touch behavior, they blame the actual developers, but that doesn't fix the problem. Either no one is reporting back to the RPG Maker developers on the issues, or the developers just aren't fucking listening, which I think just shows how unprofessional these deggy kabootlickers are. Not only is their first instinct to blame someone else, they then don't make any effort to rectify the issue. I suppose they'd rather spend weeks campaigning against people who lightly plagiarize their resources or don't comply with the incredibly moronic ELA for Visual Novel Maker, but those are stories for another time. They could get away with being amateur and unprofessional to some degree if this was a beta, but this is a released product and most people who own it, myself included, paid $90 for it baseline. That's before we go into the trolls upon trolls of DLC and other such things they sell with it. In this case, there's no excuse for this lacking and lazy approach to correcting mistakes. It would help if less than 70% of the PR members didn't have their heads far up their asses. To add further insult, calling them out on Twitter for this usually ends up with the user's account on RPG Maker Web's forums being banned. I was burned several years ago, so I have no issue broaching these topics. 
In case I didn't make it obvious, Degeka and the RPG Maker web scene is a very oppressive corporate one. They may lay on a thin facade of being there to help, but this quickly vanishes when you ask them to fix key features that are broken in spite of a patch, usually resulting in a warn and locking the thread. This is some Star Wars The Old Republic levels of bad PR, and personally, I think at least 80% of the staff of RPG Maker Web should be laid off for their lack of tact and poor code of conduct. The only people who show any sense of professionalism are okay, you're in touch, Fuzzy. The rest may as well be overly insecure mouth breathers with a piece of mild cheese in place of a serviceable human brain. It only takes a set of eyes and a general knowledge of what monetarism looks like to see that RPG Maker Web is entirely focused on selling products, not on customer satisfaction. The Twitter may be the best example, with 60-70% to 70 of it being advertisements for products. You can't scroll down without seeing at least two ads per page of content. For most websites, including their own forums, ironically enough, this is an absolute no-no. Even web page ads are only allowed a maximum of three per page before it becomes a little unorthodox. I respect that on Twitter it is largely designed as a marketing space and that this kind of thing can fly more easily, especially seeing a lot, a lot of Twitter accounts are solely for marketing and PR. However, the announcement boards on the RPG Maker Web's forums fares a little better. With a forum full of ads for DLC, they hope their viewers will buy. I find this pretty condescending and hypocritical when they don't allow so much as mere mention of other websites, game development engines, or forums on their boards, which shows to just what level their insecure depravity is held in. They don't even intend to fix the glaring flaws in our RPG Maker MV because they can't sell that, and putting manpower towards bug fixing takes manpower away from making new products to sell. While this is working well for them now, it's not going to last. Making more issues than you solve and instead selling your users more produce is a good way to get quick bursts of sales, but it will not be a stable investment. It's also an incredibly big insult to consumers of your product, letting them know, not even subtly, that they're only worth the use in what money they can throw at you. It also encourages bad developer behavior within that studio, while flattering and incentivizing the stigma so many RPG Maker developers want to get away from. For those who aren't aware, the RPG Maker stigma is a phenomenon born from Steam Greenlight. Where developers of RPG Maker who hadn't made a very compelling game could sell their mediocre product for a decent sum at the buyer's expense. And because this became common, as it was easy to make good looking bunches of screenshots and maybe even a decent trailer, these became snapped up, but then quickly were dismissed, as a result of customer dissatisfaction. Now, anything which uses the RTP, which is fairly recognizable when a lot of games have used it, is branded RPG Maker trash and not given a second thought. This is what came to be known as the RPG Maker stigma. To sell products without consent, Consideration for the customer satisfaction is following in that same trend, and fools developers into thinking it's okay to sell their bland generic RPG Maker product with no thought or love put into it for a quick buck, because the engine's developers do the exact same thing. If they wanted to prove otherwise, they'd fix the myriad of issues currently afflicting the 1.6.2 build of RPG Maker, rather than selling DLC packs and new things like Visual Novel Maker. And for those who actually bought that load of hog shit, you have my deepest condolences. There's a program called Renpy, which is not only free, but treats its customers like people rather than piggy banks. Unsurprisingly, the only person I've seen advocating and defending this unabashed shit show of a game development engine is Soliana, the same person who also benefits largely from all of the DLC packs purchases. I tried the demo for it, played with it a bit, found 30% of the features were bogged or wonky, and made my decision not to purchase it until it was an insane special, which is yet to happen to my knowledge. What I find particularly annoying is that when people do give feedback for NV, it's usually in reference to features that were never promised but that they wanted anyway, and not the glaring issues in every patch in the base installment or even god forbid the lazy apathetic attitude of the developers themselves. I personally would tremble at the idea of them trying to add the XP mapping system given that the current mapping system works just fine as it is. In the end, it's unlikely developers or anyone tied to RPG Maker Webs or the development of RPG Maker itself will watch this or take notes from it. They may do. Perhaps they aren't entirely unreasonable. But if that's the case, they've done a very poor job of showing it.